what are the causes of hyperkalemia the causes i am discussing are taken they are based upon what is given in nelson but uh, the tables have been you know simplified a bit and i'll be adding information wherever it is needed so first is increased potassium intake in case the intake is more then obviously there is a tendency to develop hyperkalemia if there is oral potassium intake for any reason or iv intake of potassium then the hyperkalemia can develop in case of repeated blood transfusions again hyperkalemia can develop because whenever there is storage of blood potassium is a intracellular ion potassium moves out of rbcs and this potassium moving out of rbcs produces increase in the serum potassium levels in the stored blood so when this high potassium containing blood is given it raises the serum potassium level as well you need to understand that in case of fresh blood the chances of uh, hyperkalemia are relatively less in case of stored blood or blood products particularly where rbcs have been stored for more than uh, 36 to 48 hours you will find that serum potassium levels are significantly more second category are the transcellular shifts of potassium you know that potassium is a intracellular ion in certain situations certain acid base imbalance as well as use of certain drugs this potassium which is inside the cell can move out into the blood this extracellular potassium will cause manifestations of hyperkalemia so second mechanism of hyperkalemia is increased transcellular shift of potassium even if the total body potassium may remain normal so acidosis causes shifting of potassium to the outside so whether it is metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis hyperkalemia can occur in both of them but nelson also says in description that metabolic acidosis causes more severe hyperkalemia than respiratory acidosis so it is metabolic acidosis which is a bigger stronger culprit second are the drugs now these drugs are very important mcq on these drugs have already been asked so what are the important drugs beta blockers can cause hyperkalemia succinylcholine can cause hyperkalemia digitalis and fluoride intoxication can cause hyperkalemia third category are acute events like rhabdomyolysis tumor lysis syndrome in multiple malignancies and malignant hyperthermia which is a complication of certain anesthetics they all can produce hyperkalemia by causing increased potassium movement from inside to outside the cell in patients who are in people who are undergoing rigorous exercise vigorous exercise as well as insulin deficiency can cause transcellular shifts of potassium hemolysis hematoma and gi bleeding can also cause transcellular shift of potassium to the outside and finally there is a thing called as hyperkalemic periodic paralysis which is a channelopathy in which transcellular shift produces episodic paralysis episodic a hyperkalemia in the patient the third category is decreased potassium excretion potassium is not getting excreted out of the body so firstly obviously it will be seen in all varieties of renal failure it will occur in primary adrenal diseases like salt losing forms of cah there are two important salt losing forms you have 21 hydroxylase deficiency and you have 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency they both will have hyperkalemia it can be seen in addison's disease where there is deficiency of uh, your uh, where there is deficiency of adrenal cortical hormones and it can occur in ald ald stands for adreno leuco dystrophy then it can be seen in hyporeninemic hypoaldosteronism i have highlighted it because mcq on this has been asked in central institute aim entrance exam which among the following are causes of hyporeninemic hypoaldosteronism except so what the causes of hyporeninemic hypoaldosteronism will cause decreased potassium excretion leading to hyperkalemia the causes include lupus nephritis urinary tract obstruction sickle cell disease and post renal transplant so these are the four important causes that you need to remember then we have renal tubular disease can cause hyperkalemia which includes pseudo hypoaldosteronism barter syndrome type 2 and finally we have drugs barter syndrome type 2 only the early onset parts or the rare forms of barter syndrome type 2 can cause this usually as we shall see barter syndrome in general tends to produce hypokalemia 
but there is one form type 2 which can sometimes produce in the early forms or acute stress form it can cause hyperkalemia as well now drugs which cause hyperkalemia by decreasing potassium excretion they will be the drugs which will be affecting the renal function or renal blood flow directly or indirectly it includes drugs like renin inhibitors ace inhibitors angiotensin receptor blockers potassium sparing diuretics calcineurin inhibitors like cyclosporine and tacrolimus non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs heparin trimethoprim and drospirenone drospirenone is present in some of the oral contraceptive pills so it is a component of some ocps so these are the major causes of hyperkalemia that you need to remember